All right, we're here at the Cage Fury HQ with the CEO himself, Rob Haydeck. Rob, happy fight week, CFFC 120. How are you feeling? So far, so good. Everything's uh, on track. The phone's not ringing today. That's usually a good sign. No news is good news, right? Especially on fight week. So a uh, couple, a uh, few things left and we'll be ready to go. And you know, CEO of Cage Fury, Fury Grappling, yep. a, a busy man. But this card to me yeah. stands out. This is the biggest card I would say name value Cage Fury's ever had, right? We have Kyle Dawkus, yes. Paul Capaldo, Luke Fernandez, Charlie Campbell, Dennis Bazuki. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Yes. Are you agreeing with me? Is this the biggest card you guys have had? Yeah, and an easy way, a barometer for us to, to measure that is when Arias, Brad, Jason, the whole crew, we get on the phone and we have to do bout order. It's almost an injustice the first fight of the night because they would probably be the main card on right. any other promotion in the Northeast. So, yeah, it's definitely stacked from, from top to bottom. And why was the Hard Rock the spot to bring this card? Anytime we go to Hard Rock, we... we we load it for bear. I mean, it's a huge venue, um, seats, you know, almost 4,000 people. So, you know, we bring the stars out there. We bring the top prospects. Doesn't matter if they're local or from out of the area. And then I'm sure you've seen, you know, Dana White post on Instagram, Twitter, his little, yeah. you guys got to watch this fight, blah, blah, blah. It, yes. Give me your Dana White CFFC 120. You got to watch. Oh man, that's, that's, that's such a tough question because whoever you leave out, I mean, could be fight of the night. Here's what I said earlier. I was talking to somebody. Actually, we were having a production call. And this is one of those cards that anybody on it could get the call to go to the Contender Series. And I would not be shocked if four or five guys get that call or gals. I don't think we have any gals on this card. But I expect that call to come for several of these fighters on the card. I mean, Charlie Campbell, he's been there before. Paul Capaldo should have been there, had a little setback with medicals or he was COVID. sick. COVID, okay. So, I mean, he's on the doorstep. You have Bazooka, I mean, you have Vilson, and you also have Wendell, their opponents. And then, you know, you have guys like Eric Nolan, who never disappoints, Tom Picciano. I mean, he's never in a boring fight. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, you have Macaulay versus Kowalski. I mean, that fight, that fight alone is main event anywhere else. So yeah, I'm a little excited for this card. You're getting me even more excited. And that's hard. Yeah. That's a lot to say, because this is a good card. Can't wait. And you're not slowing down. You already have 120, or excuse yeah. me, 121, 122, Tunica yes. and uh, Tampa. Are you going to look to keep expanding the regions of Cage Fury? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in the very near future, our staff's going to expand quite a bit. Um, we're in the process of building out our infrastructure, but we definitely have plans to go all over the country. Um, you mentioned Fury. You also mentioned Cage Fury, but there's also NCAA Division One Wrestling, which uh, we've got some big news coming out on that. Uh, this next season, I, you can expect us to do at least seven or eight events, which will be about 20 high-level Division One wrestling matches with top 20 schools all around the country. And how are you going to hold these wrestling matches? Like, is that going to be like a, a, a Cage Fury style card where it's like multiple matches? Yeah. I mean, when you look at the landscape of college wrestling, um, a few people do it really well. ESPN does a, does a great job, but we want to add production value to it. We want to give these athletes further exposure. When you look at you know, college wrestling, there's now an exit for them. There's MMA. Not like many years ago when I was done, there, there, there weren't really many options. But nowadays you see the transition of, you know, like Daniel Cormier, Bo Nickel. I mean, the next generation coming up from wrestling, there's now an outlet for them. And, and we want to get these guys exposure. There really isn't a, you know, I mean, like there's pro wrestling, WWE yeah. and stuff, but there's no like, we're going to get paid to go collegiate wrestle, like, you know, Olympic right. style wrestling. So I think that's a great avenue for wrestlers all around. Yeah, absolutely. And to put them on UFC Fight Pass, which is the largest combat platform in the world and get them exposure while they're on the college level and then watch them transition to MMA is going to be pretty cool. We're going to help build their fan base along with the UFC. And then in terms of Cage Fury, yes. what else can we expect this year that you're able to talk about? Oh man, there's, you know, the main event that was just put together with Jose Perez and Chris Vazel. I mean, Chris Vazel has been on the doorstep. Yeah. Um, that is not an easy fight. He is not an easy fight for anybody in the world for that matter. I mean, he brings it every time out. He just, misfortune has kept him from holding that belt. Jose Perez now, I, he should have been in the UFC in my opinion. Um, I'm shocked that he's not, but for two of them to go head to head, I mean, that one I'm excited about. 
And then I, I heard a rumor that Cage Fury is looking to eventually go to Vegas. Is that yes. true? Yes. So we, we historically, I've had a very good longstanding uh, relationship with Joe Lupo, who has run back in the day, he ran to Brigada, and mm -hmm. hence we went there years ago. He then moved on to the Hard Rock, and uh, he was in Tampa. We do shows in Tampa. Mm -hmm. He came and ran Atlantic City. Um, we do shows in Atlantic City. He's now, in, now out in Las Vegas. The Hard Rock purchased the Mirage Casino. So we're looking at some options there. Uh, hopefully 2023, maybe? Hopefully, right, well, yeah. we'll, we'll, we got to get our infrastructure in place yet. One thing that if you look at our brand historically, we've never bitten off more than we can chew. You know, we're very methodical in our approach. We're building a brand. We're not just in a ticket selling business like a lot of other promotions. That's not our shtick. Um, we want to build a brand. If we decide we're going to go to a market, we're going to invest in that market and, you know, we're going to make an impact. And then the other side to Cage Fury is Fury Grappling. You guys yes. just had Fury 7. Yeah. Fury 8, can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, so Fury Grappling, um, interestingly enough, um, Brad, Jonathan, and I all sat down one day and we said, you know, the way grappling is trending, let's do it. And at the time, there really wasn't much of an appetite, even with UFC Fight Pass for us. So we decided, let's just schedule the first event and see what happens. And things just spiraled and uh, in, a, in a good way. And UFC Fight Pass reached out and said, hey, we, we want to do something for this first event with you guys. The numbers prove that there's something there and uh, we're going to continue to do that. We're, we're looking at other venues. Uh, we, we hopefully will have an announcement very soon on Boston. Ooh, Boston yes. Yes. around, you know, UFC 292 in Boston? That's, that's the plan. I can't wait. I'm yeah. hoping to be up there that weekend anyway. So yes. that'd be a fun one to watch the first Fury Boston Indeed. event. You have Al Jermaine Sterling on that card, um, Andre Petrosky. Yeah. So it'd be fun to go up there and watch those guys, but also put on an event ourselves. And then another fun thing Cage Fury announced is the Hall of Fame yes. induction. Yes. Are we going to get any inductees or like a first, uh, like the first year class at 120 or is that going to come soon? Yeah. So we're going to do our first induction this week. Um, it's going to be part of our uh, schedule at uh, CFFC 120. Um, you know, we're on our 120th show. Yeah. Me personally, I took over the promotion at CFFC 7. So I've done 100 plus events. And everyone asked over the years, hey, you're going to do a Hall of Fame. And I almost felt it would be an injustice to do it any time before you hit that 100 show milestone. Sure. That was very important for me. Um, and if you look at the history of CFFC and the hundreds of fighters that have gone on to the next level, um, it's not easy to pick, you know, who should be inducted. But we wanted to do something really different that hasn't been done in the industry before. And I highly suggest you tune in at CFFC 120. And I'm not asking you to spoil anything. We'll all be tuning sure. in to find out those names. But I do have to ask, if it's up to you solely, can you give us like four or five names you'd really like to see in the Hall of Fame eventually from Cage Fury? Man. That's, that's a lot. tough. I, my inbox gets hit up actually to this day. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, one thing, one thing I believe is you should never beg to get into a hall of fame. Yeah. That's, that's, it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. Um, I mean, look around this room, look on the posters. I mean, that's probably the easiest way for me to do it. I mean, you have Jonathan Webb, Timmy Williams, still to this day, Timmy Williams versus Andre Gusamal, easily one of the best fights I've ever yeah. seen in my life. Um, you know, Timmy, I would like to see there one day. Jonathan, greatest walkout in CFFC history. Also a pretty badass fighter. Yeah. You have Lyman Good. You have Paul Felder, um, Daryl Horcher, Bill Algio. Um, although Bill and I have had our differences, I would love to put him <laughs> in one day because I think he's an absolute stud. Um, the list goes on and on. Yeah. I mean, look locally. I mean, mm -hmm. Sean Brady, Pat Sabatini, Jeremiah Wells. I mean, they're all highlight real guys. I mean, and they've, you know, what is the criteria? There really isn't. You got to represent the brand well, represent yourself well. Um, going to the UFC is not a requirement. Um, it certainly helps, but we're going to be very selective. We're only going to do probably two, possibly three people um, to be inducted each year. And look at Caitlin Chukagan. Right. There's there's another one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave people out and I'm going to get crucified. Oh, it's, it's impossible. I mean, your walls are covered yeah. with names that everybody who I would talk to would recognize, yeah. you know, George, George Sullivan. I mean, that guy, I think he defended the title more than anybody in the history of Cage Fury. And you have guys like Sean Santella, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe didn't necessarily go to the UFC, but when he was in CFFC, he was a terror. And so. another 
great thing I think you guys are doing as a promotion is you're partnering, partnering with Rowan University. Yes. To have their students intern in the events. And at 117 and 118, I couldn't tell who was college students and who was yeah. professional employees. Like, they were yeah. so good. How is that partnership going? Yeah, so as we continue to expand around the country, one of the things we have to do is we have to build out our infrastructure. Um, Brad and I were having a little strategy session one day and I said, you know, it might be a smart idea to reach out to some of these local universities because mm -hmm. they have students in production, marketing, management, um, sports management. So we went out, we had a very good meeting with the team over at uh, Rowan University and we did an internship, a five year partnership with the college. Um, the students are absolutely fantastic. Um, we expected in our first year to have maybe six to eight students. We ended up with 37 Ooh. out of, I think, 90 some that applied. Um, it's been a little overwhelming, but it's also been very exciting at the same time. So we'll, we'll improve it year after year. We also, a lot of people don't know, we have a partnership with Ohio University as mm. well. They have an MBA program there. They've done a lot of case study work for us. So. You know, when you talk about promotions around the country, um, and I think Dana White said this years ago when people were trying to compare Bellator to UFC, he said, you just don't understand. The things we do behind the scenes, like nobody gets it. Um, I feel the same way about the regional scene um, or developmental MMA. I feel like there's things that we do behind the scenes that people just don't understand. And with all that being said, if I'm like a new fan looking at all these regional developmental promotions, like right. you said, what can I expect to see from Cage Fury in 2023, 2024? Like, where are you guys heading as a promotion? We're definitely going to enter into new markets. There's no question about that. One thing that we take great pride in is our production value. Um, this past year, we, we made a full-time hire in Fred Cambria, who's come on board as our, um, our producer. Um, and he's done just a tremendous job. We, we want to differentiate our brand, not only in the athletes that we procure and we develop, but also in our production value. I think that's highly important, not just on TV, but the in-house experience as well. We don't want people to come to our events, have a bad time, and leave with a bad taste in their mouth and go, I'm not going to you know, a local show right. anymore. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing that you know, people ask all the time, you know, do you, do you hate all the other local promotions? I really don't, as long as they put some pride in the product. Sure. Because I, I think it's very important for casual fans, whether they go to CFFC or another local promotion, to have a good experience. It's good for everybody, it's good for MMA, and it's especially good for the athletes. And I can attest the promotion you guys, the show you guys put on, yeah. it, it's top notch, it's amazing. There's nothing that feels regional about it, right? It's top, top of the line, and that being said, you have so many fighters go to the UFC. You're on UFC Fight yeah. Pass. Dana White himself has even like praised the promotion. Yeah. How closely do you work with those guys? Very close. I mean, we're, I'm on, I was just on a phone call with Fight Pass executives uh, 15 minutes before this interview, constantly, especially during fight week, but all throughout. I mean, they're constantly analyzing our numbers. We talk about the production of the show. We talk about the athletes. Um, and I speak quite a bit to the matchmakers as well. You know, who, who are the prospects coming up? Who, you know, who's ready for the next level? Right. So we're, we're very involved. I should say that they're actually very involved with us, which is refreshing considering they're the UFC, the pinnacle of the sport. And, you know, whether it be Aaron Blanchfield, Sterling, Sabatini, I, I literally could spend 10 minutes just reading the names yeah, so of players. I mean, this week is CFFC 120, but you got Sabatini, you have Nicholas Mata. I mean, this past weekend's card, we had four athletes, and Jasmine, you saw, get a huge victory over Miranda Maverick, who I think is an absolute stud, but Jasmine yeah. showed the levels that she's increased. And even this weekend, you know, Kyle Dawkins from the UFC is now back to Cage Fury. So my question yep. is, how, like, as the as the head honcho of this promotion, yeah. how good does it feel to be like, look at all those fighters that came from my promotion that are now champions in the UFC? Yeah, sometimes, you know, there's a saying, sometimes you have, in order to appreciate the present, you have to take a look back. Yeah. And every once in a while, late at night, I'll get on my laptop and I'll go back and I'll watch an old show and take great pride in it. You know, you mentioned Kyle Dawkins, right? And a lot of people, one thing we've stayed away from in Cage Fury is taking fighters and putting them on our card who really don't have a chance to get to the next level. Sure. So when you think about Kyle Dawk, you say, okay, well, he was there, now he's back. Well, in my eyes, he's still a huge prospect. I have no doubt that Kyle, with a, with a victory this weekend, 
could get the call to go back. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to Charlie Brenneman. A lot of people don't remember. Charlie fought as a welterweight years ago, and we signed him. Probably at that time was the biggest deal in CFFC history. Yeah. Charlie dropped down to lightweight, rattled off two wins at Cage Fury, and got signed. And and he gets a lot of credit for putting us on the map way back in the day. We don't talk enough about that, but Charlie Brenneman's probably one of my favorite fighters. And obviously you're a fan as well as just, you know, the CEO. So my question is, how did you get into MMA? And you've been here for over 100 events. Like, how did this Cage Fury partnership come to be? Oddly enough, I looked at it as a way to distract me from other businesses that I was in at the time. I had a trucking company, I had a golf course, a restaurant, and I was doing a consulting job in Atlantic City, helped the family acquire a casino, which mm -hmm. happened to be Resorts Casino. And at the end of it, the other gentleman I was with took a job with them and they said, hey, do you want to do anything? I said, you know, I might want to put on fights. You know, I wrestled my entire life from seven years old through college. Mm -hmm. I also coached high school for a decade. So I always loved, obviously, wrestling, but I loved MMA. And, you know, so I thought I had this great idea. I was going to put on seven events in the first year in an eight-month period. <sighs> Complete disaster. <laughs> I would be in the back of the house, me and Arius, and I would be screaming at him like, dude, what kind of card did you put together? <laughs> the fights were great, but there was, like, nobody in the crowd. Right. Right? So, so we learned the hard way, but it helped us grow as a promotion. So now we're, you know, we're acutely aware of what we need to do to be successful. And a lot of that can can go directly back to the first year because uh, we certainly made mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, but it's how you respond from that. I think we've done that as good as anybody in the world. And then what are your like ultimate career goals, both with Cage Fury and then just individually when it comes to your own career? Um, you know, the greatest satisfaction I get is when I get a phone call from whether it's a manager or an athlete who got signed. You know, and the most recent one was, I actually called him. I saw the post and I'm mad that he didn't call me first, but Charles Radke. And I actually happened to be at a cigar lounge. So um, grabbed the cigar, I called him on FaceTime and we just had a conversation and he was just so thankful, uh, so happy that it, that, you know, it resonates with us we start calling around the promotion. I do my little ring ring thing and everybody's like, who got signed? And it's like Charles Radke and everybody's yeah. like, yes. You know what I mean? A lot of people, you know, like, oh my God, you lost a fighter. Is that good? Is that bad? I mean, we've lost fighters literally on fight week that were on billboards in Atlantic City. Yeah. You know, Timmy Williams was one of those when he got the call. Um, and people are like, oh, that's gotta be devastating. It's why we do what we do. It's, it's, it's actually kind of exciting. Yeah, it hurts a little bit with ticket sales, but Overall, I mean, that's our ultimate goal is to get fighters to the next level. And then the last thing I just want to give you the opportunity yeah. to do, Rob, there's so many eyes on this card, so many people that respect yeah. you. You're a very prominent name in MMA. Is there anything you'd like to say to everybody? If so, the mic is yours. Tell them at home. Yeah, you know, a lot of times people look at the promotion. They may say, hey, you know, Rob does a good job. Aries does a good job. But it's really everybody behind the scenes. I mean, you have Brad Bolton who in my opinion, is, is a superstar in the industry. I mean, he's our MacGyver. You know, I like to call him. He, he literally does everything. And then we have a medical coordinator, Amy Ray, who does a fantastic job. We just recently brought on Miranda Granger to help with athlete relations. Miranda was a CFFC champion. She fought in the UFC. So she understands the grind. You know, um, it's our entire staff. Um, you know, you have Jason Lederfein who comes in and runs operations. You know, the thing is, yes, we're all passionate, right? But we're not, um, we're not fans on fight night. We're there to serve the athletes, right? We have a job to do. Um, even if you look at me, everybody's like, oh, you seem stressed out. No, I have a million things going on in my head, you know, and making sure that the athletes are treated like the professionals that they are is vitally important, especially especially on fight week because they're cutting weight you know someone who wrestled his whole life i i've made weight you know somebody asked me that question i think i think if i add it up probably close to 100 plus times yeah i've made weight so i get what those last couple pounds feel like i get that you don't want to do paperwork so we try to do things the week before the fight we, we set deadlines and all that so fight week they can come in and be treated like the professionals they are make weight and then have fun well you know i make a living out of interviewing fighters and yep. every fighter i've interviewed with cage fury is 100 percent satisfied and appreciative of you guys as a promotion and as a fan and i'm yep. sure every fan watching this can agree 
the best regional promotion around. I wouldn't even say regional. I think you guys are in the big leagues. But ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say, Rob Haydack, thank you so much. And do not miss it. UFC Fight Pass, June 16th, CFFC 120 at the Hard Rock. Rob, I'll see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you.